You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Man, it's such a pleasure to have Corey Webster in studio, two-time All-American, national champ, two-time Super Bowl champ. Man, you ever wear the rings, any of them, ever? I, I did. I had it on um, Saturday. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Which one? Um, 46. You know, just to get a guy some motivation, you know, <laughs> let him see some hardware a little bit. You just got to yeah. – which, hmm, which <laughs> giant <laughs> ring am I going to wear today? I got to pick one yeah. out of the box. Which giant <laughs> ring am I going to wear? Um, but the first, of course, was 03, 03 National Championship. And, you know, C Webb and I were talking off air. Uh, that was, that's look, 20, every championship is special in its own right. 2019, Joe Burrow, it was just magical. Like, we'll never see that again. 07 was so dramatic with all of the close games and everything. 03 for me is my favorite. I was a senior, I'm biased. I'm a senior at LSU. And also, it was, it, it was the one that came that, broke a 45-year streak when a lot of people thought that was an unreachable goal for this program. Like, it's been it's been a half a century, man. LSU can win games. It can be good. They can't win a national championship. And you guys broke through and did it. Did you all at the start of that season, do you remember if that was something y'all talked about, like this team can win a national championship? Well, it definitely was the goal. Um, but we knew a lot of little things had to take place throughout the season. But um, when we saw how we showed up for like the four-quarter program in the spring, it was like, oh, this is special. Mm. Because we didn't have any captains on that team. Zero captains. We had a, um, a peer committee of like 13 to 15 guys, but that was it. We didn't need any captains. Now, you know, at the start of the game, we just picked four people um, and we rotate those guys. But I'm talking about no true yeah. captains was named for that season. So, um, that means guys was accountable um, to each other and to themselves. You know what I mean? So, it wasn't a whole lot of policing that needed to happen. Now, of course, we wasn't perfect, so we had mishaps along the way. But we knew it was special when that started to happen. What are there, um, I mean, everybody has their favorite games, moments, memories from that season. What, do you have, you know, games that stand out to you for whatever reason? Because a, a player's games or memories could always be different from a fan's. You know, for, for whatever reason, something like maybe you had an awesome game one day where you just locked down a guy who was talking the whole time. You know, it could be different. So, like, what, what comes to mind for you? Crazy to say this. Is the Florida game that we lost. The loss, yeah. <laughs> I promise you, you know, we let one slip away from us because, you know, we thought we was a great defense. And um, they they won the chess battle that game, you know, between us. So um, not harping on it, don't have any regrets, but um, that's one of the games that I think about all the time. Somebody always asks me, just like you mentioned, um, 03 or Joe Borough and the 2019 team. And I got to say the 2019 team because we gave up that loss to Florida. How would 2003 – defense have fared against the 2019 offense? Yeah, I think it would be interesting, you know what I mean? But I'm always going to pick us, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. never going to go against, um, you know, us, you know what I mean? So I think it would have been a lot of, um, you know, we wasn't going to let him stay clean back there and, and throw the ball. We was going to have a chess match, and hopefully we had enough film on him that we can win that chess battle that time. Would you have uh, Would you have wanted Jefferson or Jamar? Who would you have wanted? Um Probably whoever was on the ex receiver side the most of the time. You know, what I mean, the guy that was on the ball that wanted to be singled. I know um, Jefferson kind of roamed around a little bit, so that might have been Jamar Chase. And then Travis and um, Randall Gay would have had to um, follow the other guys around. And then we would have, you know, Leron Landry making sure that he's the enforcer. And Jack Hunt <laughs> can't forget about Jack. You know, getting everybody where they need yeah. to be, um, when they need to be there, and knowing what they're supposed to know. How important Leron was a freshman on that. Team. Yes. True freshman who played quarterback, another River yes. Paris guy at Hanville, comes in and is a starting safety as a true freshman on that defense. How important was he as a true freshman on that defense? Um, vitally important. Um, you know, and all keys was vitally important, but it was by committee. You know what I mean? When I say that, um, I see a lot of the cornerbacks now, they don't um, understand the game on the inside. What I mean by the inside, like between the tackles, right? We did a good job because he was young and helping him progress along the way. Now, he was very talented, very smart as well, but he speed up that learning curve that we talked about. We helped him do that by us knowing everything that we needed to know so we could help him get lined up and stuff like that soon. Was there um, was there a game where where you all collectively thought, yeah, we are as good as we thought we were? Not really a game, just in practice. We competed so hard, you know what I mean? We had Michael Clayton and those guys on the opposite side, Benny Brazil's, you know, Dwayne Bowe, a lot of 
you know, talented receivers on the side. So in practice, it was so competitive, you know what I mean? And um, like I said, we had, you know, Saban in our meeting room. So we wanted to win every battle, one-on-ones. So, you know, you speak, you spoke about one-on-ones. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to win one-on-ones because Saban had to come in our meeting room. So for me, the practice was so hard and so competitive that the game came easy. Mm. Everybody talks about Georgia because it was finally like breaking through when you all beat a top 10 team in Tiger Stadium and it was such a big a big win. Of course, then the Florida loss came. But what do you re- what do you remember? Like everybody always talks about when when was it was it Tyson Browning that scored on the the screen pass? Yes. No, I think that was um Danny Ware that scored on the screen pass. Yes. So everyone always talks about like after the touchdown, the the fans just started chanting LSU and it just got louder. You know, what do you what's your I say okay, the the Georgia game, what's your first memory that comes with that one? The first uh, Georgia game. Georgia game. Yeah, I, I think it was they was the start of exposing us in running backs, if you mm-hmm. recall that. Because remember, Florida, it was the running backs that scored. Mm-hmm. That as well, that 90-something yarder, that was a running back that scored that touchdown. Um, just um, finishing. Because defense had started off real good against Georgia and then um, not gelling together well, meaning offense, the three, you know, offense, special team, and defense, um, not gelling well. So um, after defense made a couple of stops, I don't know if they relaxed or we relaxed, but then offense – kind of, you know, got stubbed a couple of times. I felt that that game should also have been, you know, a blowout game if you go back and watch some of the things that we mess up on. So that's what I remember about that game, you know, not just taking full advantage of the opportunity that we had, that we had presented us, and then having each other's back, so to speak, when, all right, maybe offense is not doing so well, so defense need to keep pushing along. We didn't do that. Corey Webster's with us. Three matches was a blowout oh, yeah. uh, in the <laughs> SEC championship game. By that point, Justin Vinson had emerged yeah. and obviously was was awesome in the MVP of that game. Um when y'all went to Ole Miss and shut down that offense, that's when I was. That's personally when I was like, "Oh, this there, who is gonna who is gonna score against this team?" Yeah. You know, I, the because you forget how good that Ole Miss offense was, and really the the touchdown they got early was was off the the interception, which set them up right there. Uh, it was first first play of the game. Yeah, uh, the, I think so. It was the first drive of the game yeah. where they had a defensive yeah, an interception, put them right right in the goal to go situation. They they ended up scoring so. And they really moved the ball against y'all all game. They missed a couple of field goals, but I mean, when when y'all locked down that Ole Miss offense, it was like, I don't think anybody scored again against this defense. And that was another one of those things. That's what I'm talking about, not gelling together when we wasn't working together. Because even though offense turned it over, it's our job, doesn't matter what the situation was, to go out there and stop them. So we didn't do a good job of having, the, that's how we look at it, we didn't do a good job of having the offense back in that moment right there and giving up that early touchdown. Uh, the 2003 National Championship team and their 20-year anniversary. 20-year anniversary, huh? bro. Huh? They're going to be honored uh, at the Florida game this year. Are you like? Are you excited they picked the Florida game? Well, I, I think it, Florida game uh, for many reasons. I think the baseball team is going to get honored as well. Okay, so that kind of makes okay. sense. Okay, that, that <laughs> wait, so y'all got to share the date with the baseball yeah, team? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. like why can't y'all have your own days? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I guess that, you know we're trying to. Put a little pressure on Florida, you know. That's a, that's a big game, and hopefully it, at that time game. it'd be, you know, even the match will be built up so much, and we help them get over the hump yeah. because we're in town and want them to get back to where that 2003 team, you know, had just left from. That'll be the week after LSU plays in Tuscaloosa against Alabama. So weird to play Florida in November this yeah. year, but it's the way that the, that the schedule falls. A lot of the realignment and everything. Corey Webster's in studio with us on Twitter, all social media at I am C Web. Go give him a follow on everything. YouTube, Twitter, IG, everything. I also, one more question about the, the team, but I wanted to make sure we promoted all the stuff that you got going on as well. Um, fill, fill everybody in on on what you're doing now. Foot, football's done and, uh, and and what's going on with you. Yeah, so I, um, I wanted to have some intellectual property, you know what I mean? So I started writing a program based off of my experience. You know, they say our life worth is our gift given back to the next generation. So I want to make sure that I um, make them, you know, a, a, a I guess a process, so to speak, that they have an easy transition because of my experience. So um, it's a transition program. We do it from high school level to college level, from college level to professional level, as well as, um, you know, somebody changing profession. So, um, you know, it's professional development, player development. And we want to, you know, we had people that came back and spoke to us. So we want to be able to do that as well. And I want to be able to have intellectual property, write books around that, um, have podcasts built around that. And, um, you know, so they can, Pull from our experiences. Not just for athletes, though. No, not just yeah. athletes. So make sure you follow Corey 
on all social media again at, at I am C Web C W E one B C W E B one B yeah, at I am C Web. You can give him a follow on all the social media platforms. Make sure you do that. Um, before you go, and man, I appreciate your time so much. You coming in, hanging out with us today. Um, with with this LSU team, and you look at all the pieces they have. Does it look like a team that has everything that that they need to be able to make a run toward a national championship this year? Most definitely. Um, they have athletes all across the board. We talked about the offense. I think everybody expectation for the offense is already there. You know what I mean? I think yeah. um, the defense have a couple of components that may have question marks based off of not being in the locker room and not seeing those guys and being with them. But I think um, the defensive line is very strong. I think um, the the linebacking group you know can make plays and very athletic and cover people. And I think the DBs have the full potential to be whatever they want. I don't think it's no different than any other DBU group, and I think they're making them earn it. So I think um, those guys buying into earning it, they can't break it down with DBU. You know, a lot of that stuff been passed on in the past. So um, these guys right here going to earn it, and I think they're going to, um, you know, kind of um, be successful because of that because there's going to be earned. It's not going to be given and not just following in the footsteps. They have to, you know, kind of like some of the professional teams get them to – um, have to earn their decals on their helmet. They have to earn the right to be called DBU, and I think that's going to help them and benefit them going forward. You still take a lot of ownership yeah, over yeah, that, yeah, that group yeah, yeah. 20 years later, but it's worthwhile, man. It's worthy. It's mm -hmm. like you you and Travis, and, and I, I shouldn't leave out Blue as well. Yes. I mean, he was a huge part of that 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 national championship defense as well. Uh, the great Corey Webster, man. It's great to have you in the studio. Thank you again for the time as always, man. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. It wouldn't have it no other way. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.